I've been to the boring, old, well-behaved, old dudes standing around classic cars, as well as to the clapped out clout boys doing donuts in the parking lot. Trust me when I say this, this video is not meant to be patronizing. You guys watching, you can still go to meets. This isn't me saying five reasons you should quit meets, it's five reasons I quit meets. So let's just poke some fun at some of these stereotypes, memes, and interactions you're gonna encounter at car meets and how it could still annoy you even if you don't want to overall quit them. The constant pressure to mod, so this is something that's going to be at basically every single car meet or car club and yes benign ones annoying ones malevolent ones competitive ones every single car meet you, you it, you're not immune to this you'll have an old dude walk up to you at a corvette club meet and be like yeah this is a nice vet but you'll be at a local car meet and you'll have some kid coming to you and be like yo yo this is such a clean build but <laughs> Having said that though, that's why you shouldn't build a car for someone else. You're never gonna impress them, you're never gonna meet their standards, you should do it for yourself. Now it's easy to say that, but obviously when you hear this over and over, you do cave a bit and you do end up doing some mods based on their advice. And the majority of times that people give this mod advice, like I said, it always comes masked as a compliment. Like they start off saying things like, I like insert this, but it would be better if you did this. Like dude, these situations, they feel like a giant circle jerk. Like, oh my gosh, I might sound so jaded when I say this, but I've been encountering this more and more now, and I talked a little bit about this in my previous video that you should definitely check out. Basically, it's the feeling of like someone comes up to you and goes, ooh, and ah, and then you're supposed to follow them and go back to their car and go, ooh, and ah, and it, and it feels like you're just all tugging on each other's male chickens, and it's just, feels fake. It's like, do we really actually like each other's cars, or are we just saying this because we want to hear something good about our car? Like, I'm gonna pretend to say something about your cars, you can pretend to say something about my car. It feels like you have to have a new mod to even show up to the meat. That starts to feel like it's more about spending money and more about tugging on each other's male chickens than it is about actually cars and more importantly people because the whole point of a car meet is the word meet. You're meeting people and making friends. Rat race and this is the second reason I quit car meet. So a rat race is basically just a way I describe the concept of why don't you just buy insert this car instead. No nah, dude upgraded this car. So I'll give you an example. I have a Z06 right and I actually unironically have these conversations with people where they'll be like oh you have a Z06? Should have gotten the ZR1 bro. But you know what's funny? I have friends who have zero ones and guess what they're told they go they get people go up to him and go dude you have a zero one should have gotten a real supercar what a waste of money go buy a lamborghini huracan and then i have friends who have lamborghini huracans guess what they're told you have a lamborghini huracan why'd you get the audi lambo should have gotten a real lambo like a v12 lambo and then guess what my friends who have v12 lamborghini aventadors get told bro why'd you buy a high-end lambo that's so expensive you're basically at hypercar prices at that point you should have just bought a hypercar and then i have friends who have hypercars and guess what they're told Ew, you're such a rich snobby douchebag. You cannot win with these rat race MFs. No matter what car you have or what type of car you have, they will always tell you that you should have gotten the car higher. Oh, you have a V6 Mustang, get a V8. Oh, you have a V8 Mustang, go get a Shelby GT350. Oh, you have a GT350, go get a GT500. You have a GT500, that's such a waste of money to put on a Mustang. That's too much to spend on a Mustang. Should have gotten an actual supercar. It never ends. You will never end ever ever please these people they will always try to usurp your happiness but just know this ask them what car they own before they say should have got insert car quickly counter okay what's your car what do you ride 99.99999% of the time plus 0.000001% of AK 100% of the time they drive their mom's Camry and they are high school dropout who doesn't even have a GED. And they're the people who have the audacity to tell us to keep upgrading cars, much less getting jealous when they finally meet someone who is truly at the top, like a hypercar owner who literally you can't tell them to upgrade anymore. And they just now dismissively write those people off as rich snobby douchebags. Like, nah, again, car meet should be about the people. You should always try to talk to everyone with good intentions in mind because you'll find that some hypercar owners are not snobby douches and you'll find that some supercar owners aren't that way either and you might find that some muscle car owners might funnily enough be that way. I would say being a snob isn't perfectly designated based on what car they own, it's just relative to what type of person they are. A snob is a snob no matter what car you put them in. I've seen plenty of snobs even in broke boy cars, trust me they exist. The third reason I quit car meets is just dealing with people who constantly lie. They say that their car is basically stock even though they have a ton of mods underneath it. They'll be like, bro, I just have an exhaust in tune. Bro, that's it, that's it, bro. Wanna race, wanna race? They do that to bait people into racing them. How little confidence do you have not expecting yourself to win? Like that's what I mainly learned is people who lie about this usually just are so scared of losing that they have to literally punch so far downwards that they know that they can still win even if they do the most dog crap launch at start. But don't worry. 
worry they had so much more freaking power because it's boosted versus non-boosted that they still would win barely but they would still win you know what would be a really good counter to these types of people drag slicks if you're someone who wants to do like a sleeper mod while still being honest you could go up to these people and be like yeah i'll race you you'd be like oh i also have a mostly stock car i just have an exhaust intake and tune and then tires people are so unsuspecting when they hear the word tires people who don't know much about cars they actually look unimpressive they actually look broke boy even like i had non-car people point at this drag slick mustang that was parked outside of a, a boba tea shop one time and they're like why does that car have such small rear wheels that looks so stupid is that like a spare tire they're riding on oh they're so poor and i'm like laughing in my head like ha ha that that mustang's got grip and he's probably boosted too and even if they're not boosted like if you have 400 or 500 wheel horsepower and you're like doing a mostly na build like you're just throwing cams in it and whatnot you'd be surprised how much more effective it is to have grip at the launch and when you can grip at the launch you will destroy these lying a-holes who have boosted cars but won't tell you that their car is boosted and that will embarrass the crap out of them imagine them trying to punch downwards only to get their nuts kicked by you and the only difference in mod you had versus their 200 wheel extra horsepower on you was just slicks a maybe 300 or 400 dollar tire the fourth reason that I kind of quit car meets though was kind of just ego in general. Basically everything I just said in the previous entry, you already heard that I got way too long winded about it. I don't actually like being around that whole atmosphere anymore. The I have to have a faster car than you, that I have to have a more expensive car than you, I have to overall have a better car than you, if I have a worse car than you then I need to compensate for it by being loud and blah blah blah. Like a lot of car meets and really a lot of car enthusiasts in general, again I was guilty of this in the past and I'm still kind of guilty of it from time to time. I'm still growing up as a human i'm gonna admit that and so are most of you watching we love competition and conflict a lot of car enthusiasts live for the drama they love the numbers they love quantifying each win or loss they love looking at specs data and numbers on paper and blah 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 and they love recording the stupid stuff that happens at meets like people fighting burnouts cops showing up and they also love causing the stupid stuff that also goes on at the meets in truth the whole ego and clout and attention that surrounds car meets is the most fatigued fatiguing aspect I've ever encountered when it comes to car meets and is probably the second biggest reason I've quit car meets. I used to be happy to go car meets, want to have fun, I'd wake up early and don't get me wrong, you still can have fun and you still will meet good people at meets, but these days you gotta search, and I mean search for those golden eggs and that basket filled of rotten ones. And once you've finally gotten a basket full of golden eggs, honestly it ain't even worth going back out searching anymore. You found who you wanted to find and in my case I found who I wanted to find so I don't go to car meets anymore but added alongside the fact that now I'm driving through town with friends now I'm going to the mountains with friends now I'm going on road trips with friends now I'm going to track events with friends and that's when I realized oh this is what we started and made us fall in love with cars for. Then you go through a phase where you find people to share that love with and then you grow back to the point where you go back to what originally made you love cars. Because the whole reason I think car meets existed for me and why it's okay to see it as a transitory phase and why it's okay for you to outgrow it if you want, if you're starting to feel like you're getting burned out, is if you've already met the people that you think are awesome. Tell them to go on some road trips with you, set some vacations up, go on the mountains together, go to a track day together. You'd be surprised how everything that you originally loved cars for will still be not just as fun, more fun than ever. The final reason I don't go to car meets anymore is weirdos and stalkers. So this is the part of the video I'll get a little bit serious. There's no poking fun at here. Violation of privacy is becoming a huge issue these days because parasocial relationships and just how social media works, a lot of these MFs don't actually know how to socialize and try to, you know, imagine friendships based on what they see online and think that they can do the same thing immediately when they meet someone online in reality, not knowing that that person is a stranger to them because that's how parasocial relationships work. I'll link to a video that better explains that than I do. You can be with someone for six months and they may still call you their acquaintance, or you can meet someone for one month and they'll call you their best friend. We cannot all streamline our behavior and expectations when it comes to who we want to be friends with. Some people may not want to make new friends anymore. In my case, I've found everyone I've wanted to find and I have a very, very guarded behavior around new people I'm introduced with because I literally have a limit to people I can keep track of. You know, some people like having a big group of friends that they know very little about, but I like keeping a small group of friends who we know a lot of. It's one thing to like someone's build, it's another to follow them on Instagram, and it's totally illegal to quite literally follow them home. 
This happens more with influencers than with ordinary people, but even my friends with really flashy cars, so if you have a supercar, or even if you just have an Atasha, like a livery on your car, like even an S2000 with a livery, will have the same privacy issues with stalkers and weirdos. Of course, not as often, because they don't have as big of a fan base, so therefore the net being thrown out into the pool isn't as large. The fact that they even have some incidences just shows that people need to learn boundaries and how not to overstep them. Respecting someone's private life is a basic social skill. My Atasha was basically just a flying beacon screaming, hey, here's bladed, here's bladed, where I would have lots of people just follow me, violate my privacy, follow my friends around, and even try to follow my friends or me home. Eventually, like I said, I solved this by just not going to car meets. I was like, you know what? The 70 people that really overstepped their boundaries ruined it for the rest of you guys. I, I can't go to car meets and effectively feel safe around other people without feeling like it's somehow just going to go bad. It's so bad to the point that you might as well not even look for yellow Z06s. Like each time I drive her, people try to race me or if I go to a car meet, people recognize me and then I don't know what that now entails. Cause it used to be I like being recognized. I like interacting with fans, but I'm actually generally scarred by my experience last year where I, it's just ruined car meets for me. I literally cannot have fun with them. That's one of the reasons why I'm mostly driving Cali these days. There's so many blue Mustangs in Atlanta, it's hard to tell which one is me. Having said that, I'm sorry I got a bit serious at the end of this video, but that's what I meant by this is a video mostly where I'm explaining the reasons why I stopped going to car meets. Because I personally may be antagonizing them more than they actually are. But some of these things were fun to laugh at and poke fun at, like the first couple of entries. Anyways, if you love cars and automotive content, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like this video, and make sure to check out my other videos as well. Until then, thank you for watching, and see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.